you know, I, I want to see that gap between the classes kind of, you know, mellow out a little bit. I want to see people have opportunities to grow up, have a family, have a home. You know, that's the American dream. And we're not, it, you know, it really is a dream now. It's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> y'all welcome to the texas forward podcast julie and i sat down with rafael jimenez and Keon mata from lone star community college's pizza and politics we talked about why their club was created how they create a safe place for all opinions to be heard across the political spectrum and why it's important to them as individuals and our society as a whole to have places where we can engage and talk politics with people who might not share the same opinions as us if you want more from the Texas Forward podcast, follow us on X, formerly Twitter, at FWD underscore Texas, or on Instagram at Texas underscore FWD. Pizza and Politics is holding an open discussion on Leap Day, February 29th, so if you are interested in that, please check the show notes for details. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hi, welcome to a very special edition of the Texas Forward Podcast. My name is Julie Cornegie. I'm your co-host. And I'm Emily, your other co-host. We are here today with two very special guests from the Lone Star Montgomery County College, Community College here in Conroe, Texas. Please tell us a little more about yourselves. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. My name is Rafael Jimenez. I'm the president of the Pizza and Politics Club at Lone Star College Montgomery. And th- joining me today is... Hi, thank you for inviting us. My name is Keon Mata. I'm the secretary of Pizza and Politics at Montgomery County Campus. Can you tell us a little bit about your organization and how you got involved and how long you've been involved? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I'll start and then I'll let you talk a little bit about what we do. So, once again, we are a club. I like to say in emails that we're an organization just because it sounds cooler. You know, it's like we're a student-led organization, but we're a club. Uh, And what we, this is our second year. So, it's a very new club. We started last year. Uh, The president and leadership at the time, you know, started the club due out of People just needed to talk about politics. You know, at the time, Roe v. Wade was just overturned. So, you know, there were a lot of students who were anxious, who were concerned about what was going on, and they didn't have an outlet on, on in which to talk. So the advisors of the club, uh, Professor Tavoli, he got together with a few other professors and said, hey, let's start a club where we can just talk politics. You know, I jokingly say we eat politics and talk pizza. That's just <laughs> me, you know, mump or messing up. But, you know, we eat pizza and we talk about politics. It's our second year, and pretty much that's all we do. We just talk politics. Can you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I'd agree the same thing. It, it's pretty much just open discussions. Um, I'm very interested in hearing what people, our peers at our college, um, have to say of political issues. Um, I think it's important to get your reps in of discussing your ideas and your thoughts. And we do a good point to keep the discussion very civil and... Yeah, it's just a safe space for you to spread your mind. Is this kind of your first foray into politics? Not mine. I've been involved in politics since, I think, middle school for me. You know, the 2016 election was really when I started to get into politics, like, directly. My parents had always been very invested in geopolitical issues. They're immigrants from Mexico, so they were always interested in that relationship between America and Mexico. Uh, I was interested as well. But from a juvenile standpoint, you know, I, 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 I supported the Mexican soccer team. And that's really all I could say about politics. <laughs> and then as I got older, the 2016 election, as I was mentioning earlier, was, it was a huge turning point for me. Uh, there was an election that had a lot on the line. Um, and even to this day has had some consequences. So in, for me, you know, Bernie Sanders was, you know, was my guy. You know, and I, I, I loved him. You know, he got me into the political sphere. He got me interested. Then as I progressed through high school, I created a few political organizations at the Woodlands High School. I campaigned for political uh, offices nationally and locally. I tried my best to volunteer and just be involved with other political organizations in Conroe and Houston. And you know, now in college, I do my best to be a good leader 
for my community and do the best I can in providing a safe space for political communication or conversation and so on and so forth. Yeah. Thank you. And um, yeah, me, I'm less, was less involved. Um, this kind of does help me spread or kind of formulate what I actually believe in. Before, I think first, foremost, I just cared about people and often politics affect people. So it's kind of natural that um, just this was promoted in one of my classes and I came up and joined and I liked what was going on. Um, yeah, I, at first my scope was very um, closed off. I really only kind of worried about the things that affected my people and my community. But um, after coming to the club for a little bit, it's allowed me to expand my horizons and think about stuff that not only affects my specific community, but you know, stuff globally, stuff nationally. Um, people that don't share the same, you know, skin color or ideologies, but understanding that we can, you know, we all share this space and that we all have to come together and try to, you know, work some stuff out. Yeah. So very human centered, it sounds like. Definitely. I love both of that. I, I do want to know how, how, how many times you guys meet. Yeah. So we meet twice a month. We meet the first and third Thursday of the month and it goes from one to three. But really, it goes for however long we decide for it to go, <laughs> really. So it's like the official time. You know, we say the first hour is going to be dedicated to a specific topic. And then the second hour is dedicated to, we like we jokingly say, this dumb week in politics. Or we just talk about this dumb week in politics. What <laughs> happened this week? You know, what do you want to talk about? Because a lot of people come in with ideas of what they want to talk about. And these topics are limited to that topic alone but then the second hour is just dedicated to what do you want to talk about you know this is a safe space for you to ask these questions to voice your opinion and to see what's going on and you know this last meeting we had a few people that just kept on going until five o'clock p.m wow. so it really there is no end to the conversation until you have to go <laughs> how how do you guys do you vote on the topics or is it just kind of a consensus in in the room or is it decided ahead of time? Yeah, so the officers, we try to meet uh, before the semester starts and just kind of run down all the ideas that were brought up while during these discussions. Like, okay, well, what's relevant? What's going on right now? What's something that people want to talk about? And what's something that we want to talk about as well? And then during the clubs themselves, we kind of like bring up some ideas. Uh, Professor Tavoli does something a lot where it's like, hey, for future reference, let's talk about this. And then, you know, we kind of just, it varies on how, how appealing it is. And the members just kind of go, oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Or eh, there's no response. And it's like, okay, we probably won't talk about that then. <laughs> yeah. Is the age group, is it mixed? Is there a mixed age group? And and if it is mixed, where you see, you know, Gen Z, Millennials, Gen X, do they, so there's a lot of polarization in this country, so we've all been touched, and I, I, on a different level, I feel like Gen Z is a little less impacted when it comes to, like, propaganda, like we've been hearing for the last 10 years or something like that, you guys are a little more removed okay. from a lot of the propaganda, but I'm curious to see what your diversity and how do you tackle those issues where we've been so heavily propagandized against a particular subject, you know, whether it be abortion, immigration, I mean, you can just pick, I'm literally at this point. Yeah, I think we have a good, um, I think most of this people are around our age, but we also, you know, there are students there that are a bit older. We also have uh, professors that not only well, they don't really kind of, uh, they don't control everything there, but they, they're they actually part of the conversation. So we have our, you know, older demographics, people that are more informed that, um, you know, have had more time to, like, study these things, and they help share us, like, information as well. Not really, like, another lecture or anything, but also expressing, you know, their opinions or their understandings. And we also have people, like, for some, we had veterans come in, um, we have uh, international students, people from different countries like Canada, um, Latin know, American countries. Yeah, Latin American countries. One, yeah. We have a lot of Hispanic people there as well, um, just because of the area right now. And so, yeah, it's a very um, diverse group, um, mostly people on our age, but uh, anybody is welcome. We don't discriminate on who can come in. And we also respect people's you know, viewpoints. Um, I think because we're not, we understand that we're not informed about everything and everybody's culture. So it's important to get these viewpoints in 
to maybe not change our minds, but allow us to think about these topics from a different perspective. That sounds really interesting to be able to hear from, uh, you know, people who are, were raised in other countries. Or is there anything particular that either one of you remember or that really stuck with you um, from one of these conversations? So I do. There is a student in our club. I don't want to say their name to respect the privacy, but th- she was someone who had grown up all over the world. Their parents worked in mold- in an industry where they had to travel a lot. So they lived in Qatar. They lived in Venezuela. They lived in the U.S. They lived in the I think a few different European countries, so they have a very uh, open view on a lot of uh, political issues. And this person, you know, we had a conversation, not to immediately get controversial, but we had a conversation about Israel and Palestine. And that's an issue that's, well, while it isn't as impactful towards us, it was very impactful towards her. She lived in Qatar. This was an issue that directly impacted her as someone who lived in a Middle Eastern country. Um, and then a lot of our, a lot of our Hispanic members have times where it's like they grow frustrated in the inability to be able to vote. You know, th- these are people who immigrated to the country are still working out their visas here. They're currently working on a student visa, and they just show their frustrations. Like, it, it, w- one member specifically says, said, "It frustrates me to see how someone from me, from an outside perspective, I see exactly what's going wrong here, and I, if I could vote." I would vote for this because I know that this is the right answer. This is what everyone else thinks is the right answer. But then you, the people who live here, are voting for completely different things that just you're avoiding the issue at hand. And it just those outside international perspectives serve as a crucial uh, pillar of our club. Where it's like we want to get these different opinions. We want to get these opinions from all over the world. Literally, we can get these opinions all over the world. And we put them in a single room, and we have these conversations where we can escape that limitations of propaganda, as you mentioned earlier. But we know we escape that through conversation, through realizing that our existing opinions may or may not be wrong, and that's how we progress as individuals. It sounds like it kind of opened up your viewpoint, or it does a good job of that. Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. I- I, I do. I do. I love that. I love that. You know, you guys are. How do you create that type of space? You know, obviously, what the Israel and the Palestine, what's happening, it's a very sensitive, you know. So, how do you create that self safe space so the young lady that you mentioned feels like she can, she can, she can voice her concerns and relate on all her experience from living, you know, in all these different places, but still feel like she's not going to be ostracized. Mm-hmm by having her viewpoints? Um, I think what's important there is that, so we obviously are not unbiased, right? We have our own biases, Mm -hmm. but the club itself is unbiased, right? Mm -hmm. We don't, we bring up these topics, but we're not heading them with, um, this uh, is is the right opinion you should have. Yeah, this is what we think. We're not forcing people to, we're not bending the, you know, the, the questions that we have to fit a certain mold of we're not trying to direct you to think this way we're not even um trying to get you to come to a conclusion we're just trying to open the discussion so we're not saying we're not just trying to get everybody together and be like oh is israel right is uh palestine right no we're just having discussion about it so i think it's important that we're not really here to solve the answers right or solve get answers we're here to have a discussion about it so it's Free and we have our own viewpoints as well, which we'll share. But we're not spearheading and overtaking the conversation. We're not interrupting people, even if we do think they're wrong. We give them their time to speak, and you know we share. We just share. And I would like to give a lot of credit to our members as well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean the club wouldn't exist without them. And you know we can do everything in our power to make sure that the club remains unbiased, but or you know to make sure that we're allowing for free conversation. But at the end of the day, the members are doing an excellent job themselves and making sure that. They moderate themselves, they moderate each other, they moderate the conversations at hand. There's, you know, in, in the times where we have had disagreements, it's been met with maturity, it's been met with academic readiness. You know, it's like we're all just here to learn. And we all respect each other as peers, we respect each other as individuals, and respect each other as humans, which is the most important thing. Raphael, what we were talking about off camera about, you know, how it's a special space that you've created here. Um, what do you think 
the differences between media and social media specifically and your club, like how can we bring some of that to a broader audience, I guess, or how can we bring that into our everyday lives when we're dealing with, pe- not dealing with, that's not the right way to say it, but when we're talking with people outside that don't have the same opinion as us, like are there tools that you guys discuss in your group to help people keep calm or um, just ways that you see that you'll naturally, you know, um, make that happen that could be applied to the outside world? And do you guys like take this information and discuss it other places? Or is it really like we just talk about this is our space and we know it's safe, so this is where we talk about it? Or is it a bigger... Um, does that make sense? Yeah, there's a lot of points to address there, so I'll try my best to address the best, or address those points to the best of my ability. So social media and media in general has this veil of anonymity, right? Where it's like you can just say anything you want and there is no repercussions, right? You might Your comment might, might get disliked. You might get reported for whatever reason. Someone might say, no, actually, you're dumb and wrong and here's why. But at the end of the day, who cares, right? Because I can just point post whatever I want on Twitter, I, or now X, I guess. Uh, you can post whatever you want on Facebook and Instagram. It doesn't matter, right? Because your reputation, your, perso- your persona isn't on the line. In contrast, our club, you have to meet the reality that these are real people, right? These are people that you're talking to. This is a real outside place where you have to make sure that you're being mature in what you're saying you need to think about what you say before you say it which sounds like something which sounds like common sense think about what you say before you say it and it's been something that's been drilled into us since kindergarten but some people just forget online and so in this space we we have to come with that come to terms with that reality that you know people are people and you have to respect those people um and i guess in, in in questions of like is pizza politics, is that our only safe space? I have a lot of respect for Lone Star College Montgomery. The entire campus I would recognize as a safe space, right? And while I would say that pizza and politics is a bubble in the sense that people who are interested in politics can come in and talk about politics, I haven't been to a single class in that campus or I haven't been to a single location in that campus where I can't talk to someone freely, right? So, and I think that goes with a sense of just academic freedom Right? It's like if a college campus is a place where you learn, is a place where you can grow as an individual, where you can ask questions that wouldn't normally be asked. And that we, in, in the freedom of that, pizza and politics likes to embrace that. I love that. I do have a question about the safe space because, you know, it gets a bad rap. <laughs> like, yeah. just that, for, I don't really understand why. Like, what do you think about that? I think like o- the- often safe spaces, um, especially online, they can be seen to like shut down stuff that may make you uncomfortable, but this is a place where you can be uncomfortable and nothing's gonna happen to you, right? We don't really promote um, not recording in our thing, but it's kind of like general, like we don't record. We allow people to say what they want and not kind of be permanent on the internet. And also one thing that earlier that um, stuff that's like reflected on social media about discussions like this, usually they're very, Anima, animus or have a lot of animosity towards them. People are like arguing, they think you're wrong or they hate you because you think a certain way. I think would make a good point that to understand that people would think differently than you. Not everybody comes from the same background. People are raised differently. We have Christians people there. We have Catholic group there. Um, we have, you know, agnostic, atheist people that are very secular. And yeah, we just respect where you came from we respect what you, you know, what you're trying to share with us, and we make a point to keep it safe, but not keep it. You know, we're grown-ups. You can deal with uncomfortable situations. You can deal with somebody disagreeing with you, but I mean, we're not going to just shut you down if you say something that we don't like. But also, we keep it respectful. You know, we're going to keep things not heated, very civil. To those are great points, and I I do appreciate that a lot because we do try our best to just go back to you know going back to safe spaces to maintain a safe environment where we can voice our opinions but to, to answer your question about why it's safe space in general seem to be perceived as negative 
I, I hate to bring it up, but you know, there is a lot of like criticism since like against woke culture, right? Or just the idea that, you know, people's identities can be respected, you know, people's feelings can be, you know, respected or just like appreciated as well. And so the idea of like a safe space is someone where someone's identity and someone's someone's humanity can be respected is just perceived as like it's it's an embrace it, I guess people who are against world culture see it as an, as embracing these woke concepts. Whereas, like, it doesn't make sense. A safe space to me is someone where somewhere where I can feel safe. You know, regardless of any political bias, regardless of anything. Obviously, we're a political club, but you know, people in there who have political biases or don't have political biases and just want to have a conversation. That's what we're about. We're just like just so you can sit down, feel safe, express yourself, and have a an adult mature conversation. I'm so happy you said that. I think I haven't heard it put in that those terms, but I think you hit the nail on the head where you said this is a place where we can think freely and we're not going to be punished for it. We don't have to fit into I'm right and you're wrong, but out there it does feel like everything nothing is bipartisan anymore and it you, you are fighting for your identity um and you know to belong to this group of people or that group of people and it's like no we can actually just be human and yeah. we can have our own thoughts and ideas so i think Absolutely. you really yeah. nailed it there i wanted to um circle back and get your opinion on um if you had any like moments that um, from the outside perspective of the students from other places because um, we didn't give you a chance and I just wanted to see if you there's anything that you wanted to share as far as that goes. Like, um, are you saying international the students? The international students, like if they had brought a new perspective to you. Um, I think, yeah, recently in our um, love, love is love topic and we're talking about like ages of consent and um, I guess LGBTQ uh, marriage laws, black and white marriage laws. Um, and we started talking about just uh, customs and stuff, right? Um, we had somebody, I don't think he's from India, but he had spent some time over there and also researching, uh, I guess, marital laws over there. And they were talking about like prearranged marriages, something that's not common here, right? Um, and how just, statistically right might be a little bit more successful over there and um just different dynamics that kind of brought it kind of gave us more questions to discuss and to discuss like what marriage like really is about is it completely love is it financial um what are the reasons to get married so it just adds another dynamic on top of what we already have here in our u.s minds i love that I, I, I'm really interested in, you know, it's like, do you guys do things outside of the club? Uh, whether it be civic or just going out and having pizza. Uh, do you keep that social network alive when you when you guys are working through Montgomery County? Um, okay. Yes. The good community engagement, that one, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so pizza and politics, we try to maintain this unbiased model. Right. So there have been times where we have considered, OK, well, maybe we should fundraise for this movement. Maybe we should go out and promote this political candidate. However, you know, I, I've spoken with my officer team and it always comes down to we don't want anyone to feel like this isn't a place for them. Right. So in the in the times that we do go out into the community and promote something, it's usually just along the lines of be active in the community, Important. right? That's really all we promote. It's like uh, in the 2022, 2022 November elections, we, you know, I pushed, like, go out and vote. Get registered to vote. If you need help registering, here's some links. Go talk to this person. Um, here's a voter guide on who you can vote for. You know, Keon, actually, you benefited from that voter guide. You mm -hmm. were actually able to go out. You, you became informed mm -hmm. on how, what was going on, and you went out and vote. Okay. So that's just some, that's really what we promote. We promote just going out, being active, becoming informed. In terms of like social ties, we're all friends. Mm. You know, it's like uh, I would have never met Keon if, if it weren't for pizza and politics. And now we, you know, we meet, see each other in the hallways, we hang out, we mm -hmm. talk. And outside of the club as well, there, you know, we already have these social ties. So we'll see each other and we'll just ask questions to each other. You know, in the middle of the library, we'll just start talking. 
and then other people will hear and they'll join in and then it's like, oh, well, if you're more curious about this, come to Pizza and Politics. Nice. So you have, you know, you have found like other members through being in the library or being out in public. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So my train of thought came back. <laughs> um, so in regards to like, I know, I know you had mentioned 2016 and, you know, Donald Trump is when you, so that kind of is on a federal level. Yeah. Uh, Local, local politics. I did not realize the importance of local politics until I followed the 2023 Texas-led session. And so I, that was when I was like, oh, this is a whole different arena. I had been, you know, worrying about what, you know, our Senator Ted Cruz had been doing. So how do you, like, meet that balance where you are, you are paying attention to what's happening on a federal level, but you're also you're 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 down, and you're like, this is what's going on in the school districts. You mentioned you have um, siblings that are still in, you know, high school and along that line. So, how do you find that balance in your group where you're discussing those local issues that are going to impact us every day, and more or less on the federal issues, which are kind of taking up a lot of the a lot of the air time. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I think one important thing that we have coming up is. Um, our panel, which we actually invited the four party to be a part of. And that's also another that right now that's our probably one of our big steps of getting people involved in local politics. Right outside we're gonna have um one of our professors um that's gonna help people get uh registered to vote um uh, for locally and also we have questions prepared to ask you um or ask just our members for uh Right, the, what do we have, uh, Republican? Yeah, we have a, so the panel, just to go more in depth on that, the, in, in terms of local politics, we set up a panel full of local politicians, or local, not politicians, uh, local political parties, yeah, representatives yeah, from local political parties, so that they can talk about local politics. They can talk about the importance of getting registered to vote, the importance of voting, who exactly you're voting for, each representative, I'm, I'm sure, will have their you know, uh, biases and we'll have like, oh, actually, no, you should vote for this, set this policy. Uh, and so we're just, we're, gonna, we're trying to host this panel so that the people of the community, of the college, can know what's going on exactly. Because as you mentioned, like the media is just overrun with these non-issues, really, <laughs> that just, it's a plague. You know, people are more concerned about woke culture and about, you know, these once again, these non-issues that just don't matter, and they're forgetting about the real issues that are occurring in their communities. So hopefully, you know, being able to shine a light on the community with these local representatives, um, as Keanu was mentioning, we, we're going to have a, a Republican, we're going to have a Democrat, we're going to have uh, a member of the Forward Party, we're going to have a Libertarian, we're going to have a Socialist. So we're going to have these, it, these local people who are interested in local politics to make sure that local people get registered to vote for local issues. And it's also important, like it helps inform uh, some of our students and maybe not all the policies might affect them directly, but it could affect their, you know, families or their parents, you know, maybe their parents own homes and there's stuff about property taxes that's going on and allows it just it's our seeding, right? We're planting seedlings for them to share information with their own people and maybe get their, you know, not only them, but their families involved uh, in our community as well. Maybe they're where they're uninformed, they get informed, and then they inform their parents and stuff. They're like, you know what? That policy actually affects us and what we have going on over here. So it just kind of just spreads off from there. Hopefully that will like get people a little bit more involved. Well, is this open to the public? Absolutely it is. Okay. Absolutely. So this yeah. will be at a time where um, anybody, if you're in Montgomery County, you should come out and you should, do you want to tell like when is this and do you all already have the place? Do you want to share yeah. right now? Absolutely. Um, so that they can, you know hopefully come and, and hear you guys absolutely so i do want to emphasize that it, it, since it is a community college we do have a preference for students obviously we we do you know uh promote to the student body but of course if you're a resident of montgomery county you have just as much right to access information as anyone else so we do promote or we do we would like to publicize this event to anyone who's listening it's going to be taking place at lone star college montgomery on 242 the building it's going to be taking place is building G in room G102 from 1.15 to 3 p.m. So, and 
it's a big auditorium room that we have reserved. There will be pizza. You know? <laughs> uh, one saying that we have in the club, come for the pizza, stay for the politics. So if you really only want to come for the pizza, please come for the pizza. But <laughs> do stay for the conversation. And, you know, in, in during this p- panel, if you have any questions that you would like to ask these political parties, we're going to have a segment where it's going to be open to the audience to ask any question you would like. If there are single issue voters that are interested in this single issue and you want to hear a diverse panel of political parties talk about that, talk about that single issue, you're more than welcome to. So absolutely, this panel is for information. You know, it's to get educated and get registered to vote. And what is the day and the date? Right. Good point. Uh, so February 29th of okay. this month. What drives you guys to be so civically engaged and to incur? And then, so that's one question. Like, is there a moment in your life that you really was, you know, that you were like, I have to be involved? I know you said you mentioned kind of the 2016 election. Um, what was it about that? And that's part one of the question. And then part two of the question is, why do you think it's important for civic engagement in our communities, and what can we do to bring more people in? Um, I know for me, um, I'm very interested in uh, my community, uh, Hispanic and Latino people. Um, I know that um, Hispanic males might be one of the lowest turnouts for um, voting, but I think it's important for us to to vote, I think it's important for us to understand like these topics because as we grow and we get here and our generations are forming in Texas or you know in California anywhere, um, and our communities grow, that we should be more informed. We should be more um, together. We should. I think we should be able to help our community more, and that's it. It helps us gain a stronger foundation for the future generations, if that makes sense. Are there specific issues or not? I don't want to get into the weeds, but Mm -hmm. is there something like that you're really passionate about? Like it's because I want to see my community thrive or in in like education or anything like that. I think education is very good. I know that. um, Yeah, I I think pushing education is is one thing that I would like to see more from. Hispanic people and parents. Um, it's kind of hard, though. Um, often you see, uh, often when your parents are from somewhere else, they do not know all the avenues and pathways to kind of, or the connections, you know, they don't have all the connections here because they're busy working. And um, oftentimes I see a lot of my uh, peers and childhood friends they 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 do well. I think a lot of us are doing well, but um, I see some of us just call fall victim to being um, uninformed and uh, I guess social pressures and being kind of cast aside when you're you know working class and um, yeah and then also just falling victims to mistakes. Sometimes you could make one mistake and it can lead you down a bad path that you might never recover from or it takes a lot of hard work community the people that you're around it's super hard to um, think differently whenever you're around people that you know might not want for the best for you if that makes sense yeah that does make sense what about you Raphael so that's great I love that appreciate you but you know it to guess I'm gonna have like a like like a history lecture about my life (laughs) but you know the 2016 election was was crucial for me you know, that was the year that Trump ran for office on the Republican uh, caucus. And his rhetoric towards immigrants, specifically Mexican immigrants, was just devastating. Right. And a lot of people argue, was like, well, his actual policy wasn't all that bad. It's like, it's the rhetoric he pushed. Right. Like, my, I come from a family of immigrants, Mexican immigrants. And to see that rhetoric being pushed and to see the type of actions and crimes that have been committed against Mexican Americans because of the rhetoric being pushed, that was devastating. You know, I saw family members of mine get deported. I saw family friends get deported. I saw hate crimes being committed in our communities, and it devastated me. And that kind of got me thinking, how could this happen? You know, in, in a country where this where we're all supposed to be equal, we're all supposed to be you know, united under one flag, united under a principle, how can we become divided so easily with just a single election? And, you know, 
granted, I was also very biased in the people that I promoted. And to this day, I, I still hold that bias. I'll, I'll stay true to that. But, you know, and it got me interested in politics and started looking more into it. And going back to what you said about working class and class structures, it frustrated me to see how that division has always existed. It's not just a recent issue. That class division has always existed. It has always been working class against the, the, the upper class. And it frustrated me. So I started looking more into it. And it, it just kind of emboldened my frustration. And to this day, I, I think labor and racial discrimination is probably one of the biggest concerns for me. You know, I, I want to see that gap between the classes kind of, you know, mellow out a little bit. I want to see people have opportunities to grow up, have a family, have a home. You know, that's the American dream. And we're not, it, you know, it really is a dream now. It's not <laughs> happening. So it's frustrating to see that a country built on values of equality and freedom is just it's coming under threat. You know, recently I saw this map by The Economist where it was kind of displaying like how democracy falls in the world, right? And there were some countries where it was like, uh, if it's a deep blue, it's, you know, a very true democracy. And then countries that are yellow and red, it's like, eh, it's kind of failing. America was a light blue. And that was like, excuse me, like we're, so, we're the, you know, we're the Post example. Children. We're the example. And you're saying, that, you're saying that we're a failing democracy and then you see statistics, you see numbers, and it's like, you know, not to point fingers, but, you know, Trump is pushing this rhetoric of just, it's undemocratic. And it's scary to see that it really one election can just cause the whole experiment to fail. Well, a lot of people would say that he's their guy because of the exact thing that you said that you were fighting against. Like, because he is, he sees the different classes and he says, come with me, I'm going to bring you up here. So... <laughs> What do you say to to that? I mean, to those people in a in a loving way, like, hey, like if you're reaching out your hand and they're come to pizza and politics, like, what do you, what what would you say to them? First and foremost, we're from where you're from, <laughs> uh, pardon? But we're from where you're from. He's not, I think, right? He, yeah, he's a rich kid, or he's, was. Right? I was just about to generational say that. wealth. I don't. He's not on your side. He's yeah. never been on your side. He's. An East Coast elite who has been born out of generations of wealth. I it, it's frustrating to see how those have been fallen victim to propaganda. I think victim. I, I think a lot of these um, Republican Trump supporters have fallen into this mentality of his issues are my issues, right? With his recent criminal charges, they take those charges as personal attacks. Whereas I think we all kind of need to step forward or step back a little bit and realize that, hold on, like my issues are my own or our class issues are our own and we need to realize that. And we're not gonna have a Messiah come in in the form of Trump or in the form of Biden or whoever come in. A Messiah won't exist. It needs to be a grassroots organization that comes in and solves these issues. So if someone like that were to come into pizza and politics, I wouldn't it's fine right. exactly it's fine I wouldn't try to change his mind mm -hmm. it is not my job it is not my right to change his mind all I can do is harbor him harbor them have a conversation with them and try to pick apart exactly what's going on and that's true for anyone because at the end of the day our job is in pizza and politics is to have conversation and to learn yeah, of course. Trump supporters welcome, Biden supporters welcome. Yeah, there everybody, you go. everybody there come you go. in. I we, think don't, we don't mind. That's great. I mean, it sounds like it really does come down to civic engagement and that the more informed we all are, the the decisions that we make will be based on information and not based on kind of pie in the sky mm -hmm. ideas or the identity politics that are being pushed right now. And so it really comes back to that is what I'm hearing you say. Absolutely. Is that Yeah. yeah. I, I just you know, when you were talking about Trump and I wanna just say from my point of view, I had the twenty sixteen, I remember it today on my one of my Facebook like America, you're fired. Really? It was in 2015 I put that. Because like, I knew President, you know, like I knew former President Trump from, you know, The Apprentice or from his other. And I, and at the time, I did not think that he was, 
he was a good candidate to be president simply because, you know, I mean, for, there, there were a lot of reasons and we don't have all day. Yeah. So, but at that time, I thought he was the problem. That it all happened in 2016 and that's when we got off track. It wasn't until I started paying attention to what was going on and what was happening in different states and what was happening outside of the bubble of Montgomery County, because we are a very wealthy county in Texas, that I started to see that he's just, a symptom of the larger problem and that he is it's like we talked about the we and he he dialed in and he was able to tap into that middle the disappearing middle class and what we were talking about earlier so i don't necessarily think that it's all Trump. I mm-hmm. think it's just that we haven't, whether it, it whether we haven't moved anywhere. Mm-hmm. We've just, as a nation, we've been running in place and on a politically, geopolitically, but the middle class, they've been falling behind. Mm-hmm. So I think he, that Trump does a really good job of speaking to that mm-hmm. and speaking to that pain. Yeah, I know. I know the system is rigged because I because I, 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 yeah, I, I happen it, to use yeah. all the loopholes. And Trump does a really good job of dialing into that mm-hmm. anger and dialing into that despair of, hey, am I going to be able to meet, meet you know, my rent, pay my rent or fix my AC or fix my car? Trump does a really good job by just being blunt about, yeah. It's yeah. It's a. It's the system is rigged, and I'm a happy participant. And so I think that I. I just I. I, I just wanted to circle back on that, and that's for our viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, that um, Trump, you know, by all instances, like I. Don't, I personally don't feel like he's qualified to be president, but I also didn't feel like George Bush was. Hello, Texas education, to be president as well. But that doesn't mean that I think that I think that there are. The problem is bigger than Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. I like that you're saying it's it's about the system, and I think that that's an excellent kind of um, spot for us to um, move into solutions in part two of this. And so I think it's a good spot to wrap up. What do you think? I think so as well. I um, yes, we are um, we have a treat for you today. We're letting our viewers know at home we're going to have a second. Uh, this is part one, and our part two will be where we're flipping the script, and the pizza and politics secretary, Kian. Keon, yeah. right. apologies. Okay. And Raphael, the president, will be asking us and our Montgomery County Chair, Brent Vesey, questions about the forward party, you know, rank choice voting. How, hey, it's your floor. You are the host. Tune in to us uh, next week to hear that. And thank you for listening as always. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for having us. having us. Thank you.